monetary policy has to target that efficient unemployment rate, fiscal policy has to be uh, tailored in order to reach that unemployment rate. Given the importance of the efficient unemployment rate, we would imagine that there are already measures of the efficient unemployment rate, because otherwise, how can the government conduct his business if we don't know what the efficient unemployment rate is, given that that's what they should be targeting. And so indeed, um, there are existing measures of the efficient unemployment rate, and in fact, the government does produce a measure of the efficient unemployment rate. Um, but these measures are really not very satisfactory. They are uh, measures that have existed for a long time, but are really backward and that are not in line with the type of model that we now believe describe the labor market well. So for instance, the type of uh, measure that's built by the government is really not consistent with what we know about you know, the labor market and not consistent at all with the type of matching model that we've, uh, that we've introduced. Uh, so just to, give you, just to give you a quick sense um, of what these things are, um, so let's... Um, so in fact, there are um, two existing measures of efficient unemployment, and these are things that you hear about, these are things that you may uh, read about also in the newspaper, so it's good to know that, you know, what these things are talking about. So in particular, um, the Congressional Budget Office, so the CBO, sorry. Congressional Budget Office, which is a branch of the US government, they produce a series that's called the natural uh, rate of unemployment. And that, so that's something that you may read about in the newspaper uh, or you may see in academic uh, journals. And uh, that natural rate of unemployment, you know, it's described as something that where the labor market, you know, should be. So it's something that is you know designed to try to capture this idea of full employment and the way that it's constructed uh, it's con constructed by uh, taking a trend taking a trend of uh, the unemployment rate series uh, so that that's the main idea uh, and uh, making some adjustments in how this trend is uh, constructed using some kind of demographic factors and uh, things like this. So basically the idea of the natural rate of unemployment is to look at how unemployment evolves over time and try to take a smooth version of that. So here the premise is that uh, the premise on which this measure is built is that uh, on average, the labor market operates efficiently. On average, the labor market is efficient. So if you think that, you know, on average, your economy is efficient, on average, the labor market is efficient, and the business cycle fluctuations are just deviations from efficiency, then indeed, by taking a trend of what's going on on the labor market, so by taking a kind of, by averaging what's going on on the labor market, then you will be able to get, uh, you'll be able to uncover what is the efficient level of unemployment. So, say if your unemployment is always moving up and down around, say, 6%, then you say, well, the average is 6%, so it has to be, if I believe that my labor market is efficient on average, it has to be that 6% is the efficient unemployment rate. So that's how this, that's how the Congressional Budget Office builds that natural rate of, un, of unemployment. The big problem with that is that there is really no guarantee that the labor market is efficient, on average. And um, so, I mean, to be able to say something about 
how the labor market behaves, you know, in terms of efficiency, whether it's efficient or whether it's not efficient, you need to take a stand on the model of the labor market that you want to use because efficiency means that in the background you have a social welfare function. And so it means that, you know, you can't talk about efficiency by just, you know, efficiency is not something you can measure like output or employment, you know, where you just count how many people work. Efficiency requires to put some structure on top of, uh, of the real world. You need to put a structure on top of the real world to assess what you think is social welfare and what you think is desirable and not desirable. So you need to pick a model of the world to be able to assess efficiency. And so when the CBO computes the natural rate of unemployment, what they say is that we are going to, you know, the model of the world that we have in mind is one in which on average our labor market is efficient. But the problem is that the kind of modern model of the labor market, which is the model we've been studying in this course, the matching model, which is the, you know, the, really the state-of-the-art model of the labor market, it does not guarantee that at all. In a matching model, there is no guarantee that your labor market is efficient on average. Uh, and in fact, in, in a matching model, you know, the, there is one specific condition in which, or there is like one specific setup in which the labor market may be efficient on average, uh, but it's just like a very special case. And for all the other possibilities, your labor market is not going to be uh, efficient on average, in particular uh, in the matching model that we've been studying. There is really no reason to believe that the labor market would be efficient uh, you know, on average or in fact at any point in time. So that's true in the matching model and it's it's true in other models as well. Um, it's not something that's very specific to the matching model, but given that the matching model is the preeminent model of the labor market these days, it's especially uh, important to be aware of that and, and to realize that. Um, and in fact, what's interesting is that in the matching model, there is a specific setup in which your labor market is uh, can be efficient. It's called a competitive search setup. Something we haven't really talked about, it's more of a, at least in my view, it's more of a theoretical curiosity, uh, more than something that describes the real world. But when you have competitive search, it's true that the labor market may be efficient, but in that case, your labor market is always efficient, and in fact, you don't need any policy. So <laughs> you have this situation where you can have a setup where indeed your labor market may be efficient, but it won't be efficient sometimes, and sometimes it won't be efficient. It will be always efficient, then policy becomes meaningless. Uh, so, if you think that policy is useful, you have to think that you depart from efficiency sometimes, but then if you depart from efficiency, there is no guarantee that on average you would be efficient. Okay. So, you have, uh, <laughs> you're a bit in this situation. So, here we want to study policy, so we, ha we have to believe that the labor market is not always efficient. And indeed, you know, when you see unemployment at 15%, like it was, uh, you know, just after the COVID, you know, at the peak of the COVID uh, pandemic, you know, there's just no chance that the labor market is always efficient. There are times when we depart quite markedly from efficiency. Uh, okay. so, so that's the first issue, is that kind of official measures that the government uses. Uh, it takes an average of what's going on in the labor market as a target, but there is no guarantee that that target is efficient. There is another measure um, that you may also read, read about uh, in the newspapers that jo like journalists like to talk about because it's you know maybe what they learned in school. Um, so and, and central bankers also like to talk about it because it's something that was prominent in the past is to use the Phillips curve approach to try to back out what is the uh, efficient unemployment rate. So here, uh, this is going to be a little bit strange given what we've seen, but here the kind of idea is that it's an old idea from the late 60s and uh, from the 70s that uh, 
basically, the, the underlying idea is that if your unemployment is efficient, and, and here's a, the notion of efficiency that people have in mind, is that unemployment is, well, I mean, so this is, it's based on this uh, idea by Friedman of an accelerationist, Uh, Phillips curve. So that's an idea by Milton Friedman from the 60s. Um, and, and the idea is that the only rate of an unemployment that's sustainable is the rate at which inflation remains constant. Or, you know, and so basically the unemployment rate that you want to target Target unemployment rate um, such that <coughs> inflation remains constant. So here, you know, the unemployment rate that comes out of this policy is not really efficient in the sense of maximizing social welfare. It's more, it's a, the only unemployment rate that can keep inflation constant. And that in that world, you know, inflation is this really dreadful, uh, is this really dreadful disease. And indeed, when this all this work came about in the 60s and 70s, inflation was a big problem, which it's not a, anymore, at least. Um, at the time, it was a big problem. And so the main thing that people wanted was to keep inflation in check. And so according to this accelerationist theory of the Phillips curve, there was only one unemployment rate that could keep inflation in check. If you were above it, inflation would start collapsing. If we were below it, in inflation would start spiking. And so both were big no-nos for the government. So you knew that there was only one unemployment rate where inflation, uh, inflation would remain constant. And so basically we would want to try to target that unemployment rate. So that made this unemployment rate like the desired target for policy. And, um, and so that, although inflation now is very, very stable, doesn't respond to the unemployment rate at all. So this theory, of the acceleration Phillips curve seems you know, completely discredited by modern data, at least in the past 20 or 30 years. Nevertheless, a lot of people, you know, policymakers are old. And so they've been, you know, when they went to school, that's what they learned, that there's this acceleration Phillips curve and that you had to be careful that inflation would collapse or start increasing if you were not at that level. And so still a lot of people in central banks try to measure Phillips curve and try to figure out the point where inflation doesn't accelerate or decelerate. Um, so that's something that you may read about and when central bankers talk, they talk about inflation being too high, too low, and that they use that to guide them for what is the right level of unemployment. But that's a bit, you know, this is a bit like round, round, roundabout way to go around things because there is actually a way to figure out what is the optimal or efficient unemployment rate uh, directly, which is what we're going to do. Um, you don't need to look at inflation to learn about unemployment. And in fact, there seems to be the past 30 years, there's a total disconnect between inflation and unemployment. Inflation is very, very stable and doesn't seem to respond to unemployment. So, um, so the main the main issue here, <coughs> and why, why this kind of approach is not very uh, successful, is that uh, well, I mean, I guess there are two things: is that one, there are other things that we care about uh, besides keeping inflation constant. So if you have other things that matter as a policy maker, then you know, it's not clear that you want to be at that level. But even if you know you kind of care about these things, the other issue is that these days, you know, there is a complete disconnect uh, between inflation and unemployment. And so by trying to learn about what the target for unemployment by looking at inflation, in fact, you really learn nothing. If you look at the data, you will see that inflation in the US is very, very constant, at least aggregate inflation, always around 1.5%, 2% sometimes. It really is independent, essentially, of unemployment. Uh, and so you're not going to learn about the labor market too much by looking at inflation. Okay? So we need to take a different approach that's going to 
um, leverage what we learn about the labor market <coughs> excuse me, uh, to find what is our efficient uh, unemployment rate. Okay, so this was just a quick overview of the existing techniques. Could you may read about that? Uh, 